so, um, so yeah, we'll do a quiz later today. Uh, we'll stop in the last 30 or 40 minutes. I'll give you a quiz. The quiz is mostly doing derivatives. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, <laughs> but you should, you should know some stuff. Is there anything I can help you with? Any requests? Yes, sir. Um, number three on 3.3. Yeah, I mean that's a that's kind of a funny one. We can talk about it here. He said in three point three, number three is a request. Um, it's h of t. It's the square root of t times one minus t squared. Um, so right, they just want me to do this derivative, and, and you can probably do it, but then they they also want me to clean it up, and so. So the struggle is trying to figure out what they did, maybe. Um, you know, it's, the other thing that's a little funny here is uh, that I'm in 3.3, and I just learned about the product rule in 3.3, and uh, <clears throat> so they give me this, and I think they expect me to do a product rule. They want me to do a product rule. I sh maybe I should do a product rule. The truth is I can get out of the product rule. I don't have to do a product rule if I... Distribute it first. If I distribute it first, then I can avoid the product rule, which is maybe what I would do in real life. Uh, <clears throat> but that doesn't help you practice the product rule. <clears throat> but do you understand what I'm saying? I think I would distribute it first. This is a t to the half, a t to the half, you know that. A t to the half times one is t to the half. A t to the half times this t squared, you add exponents and I think you would get t to the 5 halves. So I just took this t to the half and distributed it, and, uh, and now I can do a derivative without doing a product rule. Let me just try this here, watch. Uh, so I'm doing this guy's derivative. Uh, uh, 1 half t, t to the negative 1 half. That's how you do it. Minus 5 halves. <clears throat> You do the three halves. When you subtract one, so we, you take the derivative of the first, and you're supposed to add. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I avoided the product rule. I'm oh. sorry. So there's right. So there's two ways to do this problem. Maybe I'll do it two ways. Maybe I'll do it six ways. But but hang on. Okay. I'm not doing a product rule. Okay. Did you understand? I distributed it at first. Right. I got myself into this situation where I just have to do his derivative and his derivative. This is not a product rule any longer. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now I'm just doing his derivative and his derivative, and it's it's got those fractional exponents, but but that's it. It's all those. It, so it's done. It's done, but I didn't do a product rule. I did that. So it's done. The derivative is finished. <clears throat> um, you can clean it up. Uh, they, they would expect you to clean it up. If you were looking this up in the back of the book, they would probably have something, some different looking answer here. The, the way I, I taught you that there's a cool cleanup move here that I tried to teach you about factoring out a t to the negative one half and a t to the three halves, you can actually factor out the lowest power, which is t to the negative one half. By the way, while you're doing that, you can also factor out the number one half. So I'm gonna factor out the number one half and the t to the negative a half. What does that leave me with right here? One. A one, thank you very much. <laughs> Minus, over here I factored out the half, so it leaves me a five, and I factored a t to the negative a half out of a t to the three halves. That's kind of weird. Uh, I think the answer is t squared. How do I know that? Because I'm thinking about if I multiplied it back, I would add exponents and I would get that. That's how I figure that out. If I multiplied it back, I would add exponents and I'd get that. You could say if you factored that out, then what you did was if you factored a t to the negative one half out of a t to the three halves, what you really did was you divided by it. You, when factoring this out means you divided by it, which means you subtract, exponents. you subtract exponents. I mean, this is hard to explain all this stuff. You guys should appreciate this. Uh, 
<laughs> Technically, you're, you're, you're so, right. You're, when you're factoring out, you're dividing out. And I'd be, if I'm dividing this out of this, uh, I would subtract exponents. I'd be subtracting a negative exponent. I'd be left with a 2 for my exponent, a t squared. That ain't the way I think. I tried to explain it, but that ain't the, that ain't the way I think. Uh, I don't. I I think the way other way. I told you. What did I say? Uh, if you factor this out, what's got to be left here? So when you multiply it back, you get this. Right. That's how I think. <clears throat> what should be here? So if I multiply it back, I get this. <clears throat> and a t squared with a negative one half would be uh, t to the three halves. Right. I'm also real good at adding my and subtracting my fractions. Especially because I'm. Well, because that's what you do in calculus. You subtract these exponents, you subtract these little ones off these fractions, and you do it for years, and you get good at it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, there's this answer. <clears throat> oh, <clears throat> they may even actually, because this is to the negative one half, they may slide him into the denominator here. So you could have this in your numerator, <clears throat> sorry, and then I could call this two in the denominator, and I could call this guy in the denominator. So here's an answer. <laughs> I bet it is. Yeah. I bet it is. But I could be wrong. You're, I mean, <clears throat> fighting and struggling and straining to get what's in the back of the book ain't that much fun. I mean, that's algebra. And, and sometimes it's a little bit pointless, but now hang on a second. Have I said you should clean up your derivatives? Yes. And is this factoring move an important part of the cleanup? Yes. Getting it exactly like the back of the book isn't exactly what I need to happen. Uh, but is that what they have? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. They probably wrote a square root. Right. Well, but that's what that is. Yeah. So that's that. Anyway, I did avoid the product rule. You want to do it with a product rule? Let's do it again. I, thought I didn't really want to do it six ways. And this ain't six ways, but this is two ways. Let's, let's do it with a product rule. You ready? Uh, I want to, so now I'm doing this. <clears throat> Derivative of the first. Well, the derivative of that, right. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, one half t to the one half. Thank you very much. <coughs> I said derivative of the first, and that's what he told me, right? Derivative of the first, okay, uh, times the second, times the second, plus write down the first, which I'm gonna write down that, uh, times the derivative of the second piece, the derivative of that little second piece. <coughs> the derivative of this? <coughs> Negative 2t. <two> <coughs> Excuse me, got a little tickle. Um, Right? Cool. Product rule. I have a question. Okay. Well, it's a statement. So in this case, you don't use a chain rule. Well, there was no real chain rule, nope, that I see here. No. Yeah, there was no inside, I don't think. I never found an inside. You know, you could say this is inside. See, sometimes the chain rule is there, but it's so simple you don't even, I don't call it a chain rule, but listen, like inside this square root. What is the derivative of this thing inside the square root? Forget the square root and tell me the derivative of what's inside the square root. One. One. So sometimes you could say, oh, we well, better do the chain rule. We better do the derivative of what's inside the square root, but it's just a one. Right. So the chain rule is interesting to me when it spits out a two or spits out a three. If it spits out a one, it's almost like there ain't a chain rule there. That's good, though. We're, we're discussing, maybe thinking about. So now I did this problem with a product rule, and I'm not done. I mean, I am done with the derivative, but if I want to clean this up, I got my work cut out for me. Uh, uh, let me help you. Here's, you know, I could do a few different ways. Okay, algebra your, has a lot of freedom to it. You can take a lot of different roads on the algebra map. Uh, I'm going to factor out a t to the negative one half. That's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> What's left here? 
a one half and a one minus t squared. Do you agree? I factored him out. I factored this t to the negative one half out of, out of this t to the one half. So what's left there? Let's see, I think it's a t to the first. Because if you multiplied the t to the first and the t to the negative one half, what would you get? t to the one half. So I got it. It's a t to the first multiplied by a negative 2t. Writing t to the first is a little dangerous. That's a first. And sometimes you might look at it and think of it as a prime. It's right? Sorry. It's not a prime. It's a first. Nobody writes t to the first except me. I want to try to explain what's left there. What's left there is t to the first. Um, Cool. This ain't too bad, you guys. Let me just uh, let me just uh, clean up what's left here. D uh, to, to distribute that, that's a one half minus a one half t squared. Over here, it's a negative two t squared. So now I want to add these guys together. That's negative two and a half. You know, negative two and a half is negative five halves t squared. I just added those numbers together, right? Combine like terms. So now this is my answer. Um, how come this answer is different than that answer? <laughs> well, how come it's different than that answer? <laughs> oh, I can, now I can factor out the half. Right, I didn't see that a few minutes ago, but now I can factor out the half. And if I factor out the half, it looks just like him. And then I can move him down and make it look just like him. So, so it's all the same stuff. It's beautiful. Uh, you can do it however you want to do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> How would you accept that? Huh? How would you accept that? Um, that's a good question. I like uh, I like the idea of factoring out, factoring this out. So I don't really want it left here, right? I, I'd like I'd like to get that thing factored out. Whether you drop it into the denominator or not is not that important to me. Uh, but that factoring move is important to me. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Any other requests? Um, okay, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to. I'm just going to pick one of my favorites. Um, this is a little word problem, number ninety-two. <clears throat> I'm in three three, and so uh, this is in three three, and I just saw this little word problem. This won't show up on your t quiz today, but it's a darn good problem. Um, and it, like I said, it's a little word problem, but I don't know how. Population growth, I'll read it to you. A population of 500 bacteria is introduced into a culture and it gr and grows in number according to this equation. So the population of this bacteria is P of T equals... And they have this kind of nasty equation, 500 times 1 plus 4t over 50 plus t squared. 500 times 1 plus 4t over 50 plus t squared. How you guys doing? You okay? Mm -hmm. And what they said is, <clears throat> I mean, I, what they said is that I started out with 500 bacteria. I could just check them on that. Let me just check them. If you plug in a zero for T, which is when everything starts, plug in a zero for T, you get a zero right there, right? That's a zero, and so you get uh, 500 times one, you get 500 bacteria. That's what they said. At T equals zero, there's 500 bacteria. But this bacteria must be growing. It's, it's populating. That's what life does. Life populates, you know what I mean? So, uh, so these bacteria are growing in number. Uh, what's the question? What is the question? T is measured in hours, by the way. That's nice. Uh, the question is that the final sentence there says, find the rate at which the population is growing when T equals 2. They want the rate at which the population is growing. What does that mean? The derivative. Find the derivative. See, they didn't ask for the population. They didn't say, find the population when T is 2. That would be an algebra problem. There's no calculus there. Find the population when t is 2 would mean, uh, okay, plug in a 2. 
But they didn't say find the population. They said find the rate at which the population is growing. The rate at which it's growing is the slope, is the rate. The rate is a slope. Rate is a derivative. All right, maybe you're convinced. I don't have to repeat myself 600 times. We need a derivative. Right. We need the rate at which it's growing. <clears throat> so I need a derivative. And what I'll do is I'll do a derivative in general at any time, and then when I, and that'll be the rate at which it's growing at any time, and then I'll plug in a two to find the rate at which it's growing at two. Right. So I need a derivative. Uh, help me out. How do I do this derivative? <clears throat> you know, I wouldn't call it a product, you know, because that's a constant. I don't call this a product. I, I call it a constant times a function, and you're allowed to just slip past the constant. I mean, it stays there, and now you just go do this derivative. Okay, so here I am now doing this derivative. Guess what? I run into this one. What's the derivative of one? Yeah. Nothing. Okay, so that that's derivative is done. That, it's gone. It's done. Now I'm doing this derivative. Guess what that's going to make me do? A quotient rule. Thank you. Okay, here we go. It's not a very hard quotient rule. Uh, the derivative of the top. Four. Uh, times the bottom. Minus. Write down the top. Write down the top and take the derivative of the bottom. Let me get rid of some of this stuff, cluttering my space here. I need my space. <clears throat> uh, what did I do? I'm in the middle of a quotient rule. I wrote down the top, and now I want to do the derivative of the bottom. 2t. 2t. Uh, all over the bottom, the bottom squared. squared. Ta-da! That's our derivative. That's our derivative. And remember, I want to plug a 2 in there, right? That's what I want to do. They want, to, they want the rate of change at t equals 2. <clears throat> you know, oftentimes I, I've, I've taught you how, okay, when you do a derivative, you're supposed to clean it up, right? Yeah. All right, listen, here's just a little piece of advice. You can clean this up. After you clean it up, then please plug in a 2, right? But if you're going to plug in a 2, Maybe you don't have to bother with all the algebra of cleaning it up. I mean, if the goal is to plug in a 2, maybe you should just plug in a 2 now instead of doing all that cleanup work. It's just advice. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense. It, 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 to avoid an algebra mistake, don't do any damn algebra. Uh, just plug in your 2 as soon as you want. I mean, this problem wants us to plug in a 2. They don't care about this. They want, they want me to plug in a 2. So maybe I'll just plug in a 2 now without doing any cleanup. Whatever. Now I changed my damn mind, to tell you the truth. <clears throat> I mean, I like cleaning stuff up. I love algebra. <coughs> Excuse me for loving algebra. So now I am going to clean it up. I just talked myself out of it. <laughs> I kind of got this personality thing going. All right, here we go. Four to, and that's a 200 plus 4t squared minus 8t squared. The reason I decided to clean it up is because it's easy as hell, right? You with me? Look how easy it is. You distribute and clean up the numerator. That's all you're doing. Cleaning up the numerator a little bit. What is that? 200 minus 4t squared in the numerator? Are you guys with me? Distribute and clean up your numerator. That's really all there was to it, so I went ahead and did it. Anyway, now let's plug in a 2. This Right now, this is P prime of T. What I want to do is plug in a 2. So that's called P prime at 2. You know what I'm saying? You're plugging a 2 into the derivative. You're finding the slope of the tangent line at T equals 2. But that's also the rate of change of this population at T equals 2. Uh, let's see what it is. Uh, 200... Minus 4 times, when you plug in a 2, that's a 4. Uh, when you plug in a 2, that's a 4. That's 54 squared, I guess. So that's 500. That's 200 minus 16. 200 minus 16. 184 over this 54 squared times 500. What is the answer? 
31.55. Yeah, I'll take that. It is a word problem, so I don't mind rounding it off and making it a decimal, I guess. I could try to keep it exact, but this is good. In a word problem, I don't mind rounding it off. Uh, what is this? 31.55 what? It's a rate. So what is it? What would be the units? Do you know? It's a rate. Is it miles per hour? No, bacteria per second. It's bacteria per second. I think it's hours. Oh, per hour. I mean, you don't know, but T's in hours in this oh, problem. Per hour. I mean, sometimes you just got to read the problem. T might be in feet. Uh, T might be in seconds or minutes or. But it is hours. So this is so at 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 the two hour mark, the rate of growth is is thirty one bacteria per hour. That's its rate of change at this moment. You know, the, the rate of change keeps changing. I, I bet at three hours, maybe it's, it's more. I don't know, or maybe it's less, but maybe, maybe it's a higher rate of change. At four hours, maybe it's a higher rate of change. But at this moment, at two hours, that's the rate of change of the bacteria. The population is growing at this rate, at this time. Only at this time. Everything's at this instant, you know, it's the slope of the tangent line at this certain point. Move to a new point and the number changes. Yes? I, I don't know why, but for some reason I can't see it in this problem. How come you don't do the chain rule? Chain rule. Chain rule is when there's a, I see a function inside another function. Um, so where do you see that? I don't know, I just thought of it as like to the first power. Yeah, think of this to the first power. Mm -hmm. This whole quantity. Yeah. Is that what you meant? Yeah. All right, so then you would do the power rule, huh? Which means bring the one down. So you'd have one times all this crap to the zero. Do you know what a bunch of crap to the zero is? One. A one. Times this one is a one. And then you'd go do the derivative of the inside. So this will be a big fat one sitting in front of, now you're gonna go do your quotient rule. Okay. So I just skipped that big fat one and did my quotient rule. Okay. I, don't, I don't see it as a chain rule. You can talk yourself into it like you just did. Something to the first though is, I mean, I don't do a power rule on something to the first really. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can, it works, but it's a one. I mean, you're, you're kind of right. You know, if, if I did 4t, my, I'm just making up a problem now, you guys, uh, 6t plus 8. But if I threw this in, you know, with a power on it, now it's a chain rule. I mean, now it's a, it's a chain rule. It's a power rule, chain rule, <laughs> with a quotient rule inside it. Right, right. I mean, it's a power rule. And, and then when I got to do the derivative of the inside, the derivative of the inside is a quotient rule. It's a power rule, and the derivative of the inside is a nasty quotient rule. You know, here's another chain rule. Watch this one. This is a chain rule, but this time the outer function is a trig function. You do the derivative of the trig function, and then the inside function is just a little 6x. <laughs> and you spit out a 6. See, sometimes the chain rule is real basic and simple, right? You you do the derivative of the trig, and then you spit out a six. That's the chain rule. This is a big power rule, and then you spit out this monstrous quotient rule. That's the chain rule on this one. <clears throat> a lot of times the chain rule is just a little baby thing, <clears throat> but it's important to not forget it. Right? His, what's this derivative? This derivative is the cosine of 6x times, times 6. That's an essential basic chain rule concept. <clears throat> That's a more lengthy, complicated chain rule concept. But <clears throat> Any other good questions?
I just grabbed this word problem. You know, it wasn't much of a word problem. It, I mean, there was a bunch of words, <laughs> uh, but all it was was doing a derivative and plugging in a number. You, you with me? So. <clears throat> Well, can I do that one? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I can. I kind of, remember I said I like talking philosophy? No, not that's not the word. I like talking strategy. How do you attack this? If you actually ask me to actually do it, I don't want to do it. I just want to talk strategy. Uh, so I did talk strategy. I said it's a power rule, and then when we're done with the power rule, there's a, we got to do a quotient rule. But she wants me to do it, so I'm going to do it. You ready? I bring the three down, and then I got all that crap to the exactly. second. That's, that's doing a power rule. Then, out on the end, I'm, see, and once you do the power rule, you're done. You ignore the powers. Don't, it's not squared. It's not cubed. What you're doing now is the derivative of the inside. So you ignore the cube, ignore the square. You're just doing the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is a quotient rule, no doubt about it. So here we go. Uh, derivative of the top, <clears throat> four, times the bottom, minus the top, <laughs> times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. You guys cool? I mean, in a way, boom, I'm done with the derivatives. I mean, I am done with the derivative. There's a hell of a bunch of cleaning up to do. That's algebra. <clears throat> but I did the, I did what I was supposed to do derivative-wise. Uh, <clears throat> what kind of cleaning up can be done here? Well, uh, I don't see much, to tell you the truth. Uh, let's see, I got this three sitting out front. You know, I could call this numerator 4t minus one squared. I could call this denominator 6t plus 8 squared, but I don't know, that's not much of a move there, but you with me on that? I mean, everybody's squared here. But then I'd like to clean this up. I'm going to go right above here and, and, and distribute and collect like terms. Let's see what I got here. I got 24t uh, plus 32. I'm distributing a negative sign and a 6 right here now. So that's negative 24t. That's cool. Uh, and a positive 6. Those guys cancel, and that leaves me with a 38 sitting on top of this. So I have a 38 sitting on top of this, 6t plus 8 squared. How are you guys doing? So it does clean up very nicely. If you can tell now that at the end here, uh, this is going to look pretty nice. Uh, <clears throat> at the end here, I think I'll take my 38, I'll multiply all my numerators, which basically means take the 38 times the 3 there. What is 38 times 3? 114? 114, 4t minus 1 squared, all over, what happens when you multiply those denominators? 6t plus 8 to the fourth. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know. It's a derivative. I cleaned it up. And it was a complicated derivative. It's a power rule with a quotient rule inside it. Right. <clears throat> you know, when you you know when you first look at this, you say power rule, quotient rule, it's overwhelming. You know, maybe but you attack these things in little baby moves. It's not that overwhelming. I mean, I did the power. I did the power rule, and then I did the quotient rule. I mean, I did. I took my time and relaxed and breathed. Do a little algebra, clean it up. <clears throat> Is there going to be a, a velocity word problem in the quiz? No. Oh. So my quiz didn't. I like those velocity word problems about, and, and we could go over those. They're kind of in 3.2 if you guys tried them and got, need some help, but they didn't make today's quiz. They might make the next quiz and maybe they'll make the test. <laughs> yes? Speaking of that, 3.2 and number 100, okay. it's the second part 
when they're telling you that the object, what is the velocity after falling 108 feet? Right. I know I need the time. Right. Do you put the 108 where the um, SFT is? No. Or do you put 112? Right. 112. Right. You put 112. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. after it falls, well, it's yeah. at 112. Right. If it falls on 8 feet, it'll be 112. Right. <laughs> See, that's why I, did, I was kind of confused on that. Well, right. I know. Let's talk about this one. Let's do it. So this is number 100 out of, out of 3.2. Um, let's talk about this little guy. It, a, a ball is thrown straight down. That's interesting. From the top of a 220-foot building with an initial velocity of negative 22 feet per second. So I'm going to stop right there. <clears throat> Up above in your directions, they, they gave me this formula for these problems. It's uh, negative, and I gave it to you the other day. Negative 16t squared plus b naught t plus s naught. Do you guys remember what s naught was? The starting height, the initial height, or starting height. Right, right, right. Do you remember what the v naught was? The initial velocity, the, the beginning, right. And I just read those numbers, and the, they gave me those numbers, which is what they usually do. What they just said when I read that problem was that. Uh, <clears throat> I was up on top of a 220 foot building. So that's 220. Um, and they told me that I threw this ball down with a velocity, initial velocity of negative 22 feet per second. Yes. So that's this number, it's negative 22 T. So this is the equation for the height of this ball. And listen, this is the height of the ball. It's not how far it's traveled. Those are two different things. If it fell, if we started at 220. If it fell 10 feet, what's its height? 210. Are you with me? Okay, so if it fell, but anyway, what I'm trying to point out is that this height is not how far it's fallen, it's what height am I at? Okay. That's what this is. You, you understand the difference? Here, one more time. I, here's the picture. I started this 220 feet and I threw this ball down. So this is kind of what it looks like. My question is, if it fell 10 feet, <clears throat> is this height a 10? No. The height is what height it's at. So if it fell 10 feet, what is the height? 210. That's my point. And because that's what they do. They ask me this. They say, they don't say 10, sorry. But they say. This is the second part. You have to get on. Well, okay. They want to know. Yeah, it's a two part question. Okay. So first they say, what's the velocity after three seconds? That's, a, that's the first question. That's easy, dude. The velocity at three seconds. What did you just say? Negative the derivative is the velocity, right. and it's so damn easy, right? How do you? These are the these aren't quotient rules. These aren't terrible chain rules. These are the easiest derivatives there are. The derivative is the velocity formula, and what is the derivative? Negative thirty-two t minus twenty-two. This is the velocity at any moment. It's the derivative. It's the slope of the tangent line at any moment. It's the derivative. And if, if I want the velocity at three seconds, I plug in a three. And that's what they want. They want the velocity at three seconds. So I plug in a three. That's negative 96 minus 22. It's negative 118 feet per second. It's the instantaneous velocity. It's not the initial velocity. What was the initial velocity? Right. And every second that goes by, gravity is making my velocity grow by negative 32 feet per second. Every second that goes by, gravity is speeding me up here, negatively, toward Earth. <clears throat> and so after three seconds, I multiply, I add that initial velocity, and, and there's, my, there's my velocity at this moment. The second part of the question is really what she was asking me about. She said, they said, 
what's the velocity after it fell 108 feet? But see, that's the confusing part. If it fell, as this is what, if it fell 108 feet, where, what is it at? What height is it at? So if it, so that's where I was trying to get to with this question. If it, so if it fell 108 feet, where is it? It's at 112. So I mean, they, that was a weird way of that, but that's okay. They can ask these questions however they want. But if it fell 108 feet. What I want to do is say it's at 112 feet. <clears throat> you know what they want? They want the velocity at that time. They want the velocity at that time. At that height. At that time when you're at that height. <laughs> uh, I don't have the time when I'm at that height. How can I get the time when I'm at that height? I might have to solve a quadratic equation here. I might have to say, go back to my height formula and say, when am I at 112 feet? So I'm going to plug in 112 for my height equation. What are we trying to find? The time it takes for me to get to this height. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. What I need to find is the velocity at that time. I don't know the time. So before I can, to get the velocity, it's easy, dude. I just need to plug in a time and I can get a velocity. I learned that in part A. Velocity is so easy. If I knew the time, I could plug it in and get the velocity. I don't know the time. All I know is the height is 112 feet. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna plug this into my height equation and find the time. But that sucks, that involved me. It's a quadratic formula here. Uh, I got to solve this quadratic equation. I got to move the 112 over, make it equal to zero. <clears throat> solve the quadratic formula. T equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC. You guys know how to do this? Quadratic formula? All over 2A. It's 22 plus or minus the square root of, you guys could help me, but John Henry's faster than the cotton gin. What'd you say? How much? The square root of 116. The square root of 116, she says. You guys agree? It's after you. You squared this, you added this. I don't know if that's right. This is positive here. This is positive here. I'm not sure if I trust you there. It's okay. I appreciate your help, but I think. Wow. 7,396. Uh, I'd like to take the square root of that and see what I get. A perfect 86. This is the bad. Wow. Okay. So this is a nice, perfect 86 fell out of that square root. Uh, you know what that means? When you try to do the quadratic formula and it comes out perfect, it means that this original problem could have factored. Anyway, I didn't bother trying to factor it. I just went with the quadratic formula. But, but I'm going to get some two nice numbers here. I mean, there's no square root. It's going to be a couple of nice numbers. What are they? Uh, 22 minus 86 is that negative number divided by negative 32. This is easy, man. This is a two, right? One of these answers is two seconds. Uh, that's when it's at this height, two seconds. Uh, the other answer is probably negative. That's probably over here before the problem even started. So I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to... We can find it. What is it? Negative 3.375. Thank you very much. There it is. But because it's negative, that's not the one I wanted. No. I wanted that positive time. Shouldn't there be a negative in front of the 22? The quadratic formula says negative B. Plus or minus. Plus or minus. But right. So negative B. So B is already negative. Right. Negative B makes it positive. Okay, I see what you're doing. But if I was doing it, I probably would have put negative in. 
Well, you could put negative, you should have put negative, negative 22. That's what you should have done. Uh, okay. Not negative 22, but uh, negative, negative, negative 22. 22. It's negative B, right. and B is negative already, right. so ne it's going to be positive 22. Positive. So all this hard work was just to find out the time it takes to get to that height. Now, can you please tell me the velocity at two? Sure, it's easy. It's, it's the derivative at two, right? Uh, negative 88, I think, 86. Negative 86 feet per second. Well, right, if the problem said something about throwing it up at 20, this, this little number would have been a positive 22. Right, and, but um, if you threw it up uh, 108 feet, um, would you add? Well, that's not the question. The question was after yes. it fell 108 yeah. feet. Um, so if I threw it up, then what do they mean by fell 180 feet? I think they would mean the same thing, but but it would it would just take longer to get there because it went up before it before it fell 180 feet. It had to go up for a while. And I just meant for the S of T. Mm -hmm. Well, hang on. It, if the problem at the beginning said it threw it up. That's a positive 22 initial yeah. velocity, so right. that would change this. It'd be a positive 22. It would change my picture. It would go up and come down. Um, but this question seems like it's the same to me. If they ask me at, about falling 108 feet, that still means it's at a height of 112 feet, I think, regardless of whether it was initially thrown up or initially thrown down. Fell 108 feet. There, I, yeah. I guess that was, that was just their tricky way of getting me to yeah. find this number. I think. But <clears throat> well, we better stop. I guess uh, we got about 30 minutes. I'm gonna hand you a quiz. I would. I'd like you to spread out and put things away and use a calculator.